fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver, there's danger on the trail ahead. A short distance from where a rough plank bridge crossed the Snake Bend River, the embers of a banked campfire made a soft glow in the clearing. A small boy of seven was sleeping under a warm blanket with his head pillowed on a saddle roll. Suddenly, for no reason at all, he was wide awake. First, he sensed rather than heard the low voices of the three men who were seated on the other side of the campfire. There was neither moon nor stars to relieve the deep shadows of the night, and he wondered why the three men were not asleep. Gradually, their voices became more distinct. We'll hear hoofbeats on the bridge. That'll be time enough to move. Ain't that right, Blake? Yeah, that gives us plenty of time. What about the kid? He's sleeping. Mm. Better take a look, Foster. He's your young one. Well, sleep in a week, and the boy will be here when we get back. That young one has got spunk. <laughs> I'm doggone proud of that boy. He's going to have the best wait, of everything. Wait, wait, quiet a minute. You hear that? Yeah. Sounds like the stage. That's on the bridge. That's it, boys. Come on, Foster. Come on, Slim. It's time to move on. Go ahead. I'll catch you. Uh, I just want to be sure Bobby has the blankets open. Oh. Now <laughs> oh, you're awake, huh, son? Well, now, now you go back to sleep. Where are you going? Well, it's, it's the business we came here to take care of. I won't be gone long. You stay here till I get back. Don't you move from those blankets. Understand? Yes, sir. I understand, Pa. Come on, Foster. I'm coming. I'm with you. Get up there. Come on, boy. Get up. I, I hope Pa hurries back here. I wonder what the business is. He said he was proud of me. And I can still hear him riding. He sure is a fine rider. Shooting! It's gunplay! Oh, Paul! Paul, get him! I... I... I've got to... I... Now you stay here till I get back. Don't move from those blankets. Understand? I'll stay here, Paul. I... I won't move. Well, she was at the camp. Who's that? I'm riding in their arms. I'll shoot the kill the first sign of any tricks. Paul, Paul, where are you? It's a kid. Whoa there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where's my Paul? 
Uh, take it easy, youngster. Who are you? Uh, get up. Let's see what you look like. No, you leave me alone. Pa told me to stay here. Aye, right, Savvy. Toss some brush in the fire, boys, so as we can see. Well, what's your name, son? Bob Foster. Where's my pa? Foster? Yes. Who are you? Well, look here, son. You... You'll have to come with us. Your pa had to... Well, he had to go away. But where is my pa? Where is he? Where is my pa? Where is he? Bob Foster's life was shadowed by that burning question for ten years. He grew from a little fellow to a boy of 17. His life had been one shared with a score of others in the home for homeless boys. He felt bitter toward the stranger who had brought him there. If only Paul knew I was in this orphanage, he'd come and get me in a hurry. I, huh, I wonder who that is. <laughs> Miss Betty. <laughs> Bob, hello. Oh, golly, but it's great <laughs> to see you. Sit down. Jiminy, it's been about a year since the last time you were here. <laughs> I know it, Bob. It's a long way to come from How the ranch. How are things at that ranch? Oh, fine. You've had my letters? <laughs> oh, sure. And I could just about see all those acres of cattle and the big house in the mountains. I've never seen a mountain, except in pictures. <laughs> but you've grown. <laughs> well, you're a man. Uh, you haven't changed, except maybe to get prettier. Oh, <laughs> a chivalrous man. Say, how'd you like the books I sent you? Oh, great, but I like the stories you wrote better. Stories? About that Lone Ranger. Oh, Bob, will you hear all of the things I can tell you about him? And maybe when you come out with us, you'll see him. Then I'm still going to go to the ranch? Of course you are. Father's going to bring you there on the day you're 18 years oh, old. Oh, I'm sure looking forward to it. I, I... What do you want to say, Bob? Uh, well, look, I... I hope you're not going to be cross, but... Well, all the fellas see you come here every year, and, and they read the books you send me. And they keep... Well, they keep asking me who you are. Yes. And I, I told him you were my girl. <laughs> Bob, I'm eight years older than you. Oh, I know that, but... I... Oh, it's all right. I think that's the sweetest compliment I've ever been paid. You're not in love with this Lone Ranger you wrote me about, are you? Well, Bob, I... <laughs> of course not, Bob. Uh, there's something else. Yes? Well, I felt all along that you and your father could tell me something about my poor. Oh, if I could only find the men who took me out of the woods that night... Well, how much do you remember about that night? Well, not very much. Paul and his friends, their names were Slim and Black, he went out of camp and, and there was a gunfight. Then another man came and carried me away. I don't remember much about him, but I do remember that in the morning I was in a stagecoach with a nice lady. And she brought me here and left me. Well, look, Bob, I think my father can tell you something about your father when you come out to the ranch. Now I, I must go... Here's some more books. Oh, but Miss Betty, you, you've only been here a minute. All right, Bob. And it won't be long before you're sent for. Well, all right. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Betty. Uh, just leaving, Miss? Oh, oh, yes, sir. Good day, then. Good day. Goodbye. Uh, Foster, two of your relatives, uh, uncles, I think, are in my office. My uncles? Didn't know you had any, but they're here. Well, never mind bringing them. We're here. Oh. Stand aside, Craven. We'll talk to Foster here. Yes. Yes, of course. Well, your uncles of mine? Well, son, you've grown considerable since the last time we saw you, hasn't you, Blackie? Why, sure enough. Blackie! And are you slim? Yeah, sure. How'd you know? Well, you can tell me. You know where Paul is. You were with well, him. That's why we're here, Bob. We spent ten years trying to find you. The ornery polecat that ran off with you that night sure had done a complete job of hiding you. Well, we trailed you down at last. Now we're taking you with us. Oh, oh gee, that'll be swell. You've got a job to do, son, a mighty big job. You've got to get your birthright, and we're here to see that you do it. My, my birthright? Hey, let me look you over. I wonder if you've got spunk enough to go after what's rightfully yours. You bet I have. Maybe he's too young, Slim. Well, I don't know. No, wait. Before we go any further, what about my dad? Bob, the dirty double-crossing coyote that you've got to get is a man that murdered your old man. Murdered him? Yeah, and got away with it. And here's one of the richest ranches in the West. The West? Is that where we're going? If you've got the spunk. I'll show you I've got spunk. Just get me out of here. I... I'd planned to go to the West. A man named Mr. Drake got interested in me. Ooh. Drake. I don't know much about him, except that he's willing to give me a job on his ranch when I'm 18. His daughter, Miss Betty, has been here a few times. She writes letters and sends me books. Oh, I see. Blackie, 
What do you think? How'd Drake find out about you? Oh, I don't know. I guess he sort of knows Mr. Craven, the superintendent. You're planning to go on to the Drake, Drake Ranch? Yeah. That was his daughter that just left here. Mm -hmm. It was, huh? It'll be all right, Bob. I know the Drake Ranch. You do? Yep. Now, you go there just as you plan and keep your mouth shut. Don't say a word about your father to anyone, Savvy. All right. It's right near where we'd take you anyway. Now, we'll let you know when everything's ready, and then you can come with us from the Drake place to where you'll get your father's killer in your own birthright. For ten years, I've wondered about Paul. If I could get the one who murdered him... What, uh, what would you do? I'd kill him. A few weeks later, Bob Foster was living on the Drake Ranch. It was the most pleasant life he'd ever known. He found new thrills every day as he raced a wiry Mustang pony over the lush fields and rolling plains. Oh, oh, oh boy. That's enough, boy. Now we'll rest a while. How about it? <laughs> and then we'll... Hey, wait a minute. There's two men coming up the side trail. I wonder who they are. Oh, 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 Howdy, Bob. Oh, look at them shafts. The kid's a real punch. <laughs> oh, Blackie, Slim. What are you doing out here? Oh, I had some business out this way, so we figured we'd look you up. How do you like living on a range? <laughs> oh, it's great. <laughs> I'd like to live here the rest of my life. Well, there's no reason why you can't. Well, Mr. Drake might not let me stay. If you're a smart kid, Mr. Drake won't have nothing to say about it. What do you mean? Bob, your pa was shot down in cold blood. You'd like to find the man who shot him, wouldn't you? Of course I would. You'd uh, kill him? Well, I figure that's my duty. Well, you're right. It just happens that Blackie and me know who that hombre is. Who? Another thing we know is that he owns a ranch that by rights belongs to you. Belongs to me? Well, he originally bought the ranch with money he got for killing your pa. Tell me who he is. We'll do better than that, kid. We'll point him out. When? Where? Blackie and me are living in town at the hotel. Can you come in and see us about uh, whole nine o'clock tonight? Well, sure I can, but... But who is this man who killed my pa? He'll be there at the hotel. Then so will I. Good, good. We'll be waiting for you. Come on, Blackie. Get up there. See you tonight, kid. Get up there, host. Come on. Yeah. I'll see you tonight. For several minutes after Slim and Blackie had ridden away... Bob Foster sat motionless astride his Mustang. He was confused by what Slim had told him. There were so many questions for which there seemed to be no answers. And before he could consider them further, a faint sound reached his ears. Come on, he saw a figure riding down a distant hill, a man in black on a horse that gleamed in the brilliant sun like burnished silver. He stared at the flying, luxuriant mane and tail of the powerful stallion watched the approach of the horse and rider down the hill straight toward a narrow chasm. Then the white horse launched itself in a mighty leap that carried easily across the gap. He heard the hoofbeats pounding the turf with rhythmic power. He saw then that the rider wore a mask. An outlaw. Whoa! Ho, Silver! Ho! I thought I'd find you at the ranch house. Huh? Find me? Now you're Bob Foster, aren't you? Huh. How'd you know? I, uh... You look just like your father. My father? Oh, so you're the... Bob, boy. those two men who just rode away, who are they? It's a good thing I haven't got a gun. Who are those men? It's none of your business. But they're uncles of mine. Uncles? They came to tell me where I could find the man who killed my paw. And how I can get what rightfully belongs to me. Maybe, maybe a ranch as big as this one. The man who killed your father, huh? I guess they didn't know you were right behind them. But I ain't afraid of you. I see. You think I'm the one? How'd you recognize me so quick? Suppose you find this man, Bob. What are you going to do? If I had a gun, I'd show you. I think those uncles of yours will bear watching. I don't know your name, but remember this. The next time I see you, I'm going to shoot instead of talk. And when will that next time be, Bob? I'll be carrying a gun from now on. And I'll be riding into town tonight. So will I, Bob. I'll meet you there. Come on, Silver. You mean you'll really be there? Oh, Silver! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. 
After his talk with Bob Foster, the Lone Ranger guided Silver across a wide slope, through a rock-strewn gully, and reined up sharply at the edge of a cottonwood grove. Ho, Silver! Ho, ho! It was the prearranged meeting place of the masked man and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto. You ride hard. Yes, Tonto. I think our suspicions are right about those two men who came in on the stage. They go Drake Ranch? No. They talked to the boy, Bob Foster, and then headed back for town. Why they do that? I don't know. They've told the boy they'll show him the man who killed his father. Oh, that plenty bad. Make young boy kill. Hello. I want you to pick up the trail of those two men. Uh, come, Scout. If possible, find out who they are and why they're here. And meet me back at the same place by sundown. Uh, time to do it. You you wait here? No, I'm going to the Drake Ranch to talk to Betty and her father. Uh, get him up, Scout. Hold on, Silver. Where did Bob get this idea of avenging his father's death? I haven't the slightest idea. Have you told him his father was an outlaw? Not yet. We thought it best to wait until he's a little older. Evidently, you've waited too long. Betty, do you know who these men are who claim to be his uncles? Bob has no living relatives. Father investigated that thoroughly. Your father thinks a lot of the boy, doesn't he? We both do. He's the son and brother we've always wanted. Then why haven't you told him the truth about his real father? Because... Well, Dad's just a little ashamed to tell him. He's afraid Bob will hate him when he finds out it was Sheriff Charles Drake who killed Bill Foster, the outlaw. He's no longer the sheriff, and there's really Nothing no... for your father to be ashamed of. When he was sheriff, he shot Foster in the line of duty because he resisted arrest. It'd be pretty complicated to explain it to an 18-year-old boy. Yes, I suppose it would. But now he has to be told. By the way, Betty... Where is your father now? Well, he went into town early this morning. Some sort of business appointment. Will he be back before nightfall? Mm, I don't know. Why? The two men who were talking to Bob may know the truth about his father. I can see no other reason why he should be so bitter. Well, when Dad comes back from town, I'll explain that he must tell Bob. Yes, that would be best. Oh, uh, by the way, does the boy have a gun? Yes. He wanted to carry a pistol like the other cowboys, so we gave him one. He doesn't have it with him. Where is it? Well... Right over there, lying on the table. Do you mind if I examine it? Of course not. I'll get it for you. Here. Uh, thanks. Uh, just look at these cartridges for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, now I must be going. Well, don't you want to wait and talk to Dad? No, I think Tonto's waiting for me now. We may have to move fast. Well, what do you mean? Uh, Miss Betty, I'll talk to your father in town. Adios. <laughs> The Lone Ranger didn't find Tonto waiting for him when he returned to the grove of cottonwood trees. At that moment, the stoical Indian was crouched beneath an open window that was part of a room where three men were in earnest conversation. Well, it's this way, Mr. Drake. Me and my friend represent a group of eastern businessmen who want to invest in a range property. You want to sell your place, and we want to buy it. At what price? You name it. $50,000. 50000 Ain't that pretty steep, Mr. Drake? If my spread's worth it. You know anything about ranch land, you'll agree with me. Eh? Yeah. What do you say, Blackie? Oh, I'm in favor of buying it. Give the man some money. Oh, now, wait a minute. You know we don't carry around that much cash. Uh, how about an option, Mr. Drake? Just for a few days until we can get money from the East. Well, yes, I guess that'll be all right. Good, good. Here's $500 to bring the agreement, and here's the uh, option already drawn up. You seem to have been pretty sure I'd sell. Well, <laughs> we know we could meet your price. Yeah, you sign it right here. Oh, well, I... Uh... What's the matter? Isn't the option all right? Oh, yes, of course, but I... Oh, very well. Give me the pen. Yeah. Mm. There, there. And here's your money. We'll take up the option within the next two or three days. Now, uh, what do you say we have a drink to celebrate? Well, eh? No, thanks. I have some other business in town. May take several hours. I'll expect to see you at the ranch before the end of the week. We'll be there. Well, good day, gentlemen. Goodbye. Blackie. Yeah? Follow him and don't lose him. I'll be on the lookout for the kid. Uh, where are you going to... I'll take care of everything. You just be sure Drake doesn't get out of town without us knowing it. Hello, where have you been? Me too, like you say. Me listen a long time. Listen to what? Where? Two crook. They meet Mr. Drake. Sit down in the room and talk. Time to hear everything. So those two men are friends of Drake? No, not friends. They buy ranch. Drake sell. What's that? Buy a ranch, but them not have money enough. Drake give them option for $500. I know there's something wrong somewhere. 
I've got to talk to Mr. Drake. Do you know where he is now? No, uh, time to find him. Come on, we're going to ride. Here, Silver. Hey, big fella. Come on, Silver. Get him up. They reached the outskirts of town. The Lone Ranger sent Tonto on ahead to find Mr. Drake. A few minutes later, the Indian returned. Him and hotel. Rest there in room. All right. I'll go ahead and you follow. I'll wait for me outside. Uh, Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Within the next few minutes, a masked man dismounted and slipped quietly into the rear entrance of a small hotel. Following Tondo's instructions, he went to the second floor and tapped lightly on a closed door. Who is it? Who do you ask? The Lone Ranger. I'm sorry if I disturbed you, Mr. Drake, but there are several things I must know. Why, sure. What is it? You just gave an option for the sale of your ranch to two men. Well, that's right. They agreed to buy it for $50,000. They don't have that much cash, so I signed a three-day option for $500. Do you mind telling me why you want to sell your place? I've got to. Why? Nobody around here knows it, I guess, but my spread is mortgaged to the hilt. Banks give me one more week to raise some money. I see. Now, there's one other question. Why haven't you told Bob Foster about his father and how he was killed? Oh, I couldn't. I haven't got the heart. The heart? Well, if you want to know the truth, I'm selfish. I think the world and all of that Foster boy, just like my own son. I want him to like me. And I'm afraid if I tell him that I'm the one who shot his pa. Yes, I understand. And under different circumstances, I might agree with you. Well, what do you mean? Unless I'm mistaken, Mr. Drake, you're going to have some callers pretty soon. I want you to do exactly as I tell you. Now listen. You can bring a gun, kid. Sure. I've got it right here. Now, where is he? You mean the hombre who killed your pa? Well, you said he was here, right here in town. He is, kid. And we're heading right for him. Where? The hotel. Here it is. Quiet now. You can go right up these back steps. Yeah, but how are we going to get up? Do you want him to hear us? This is the room. What do I do? Get your gun out and bust right in. We'll be with you. Yeah, but I don't... Go on. This is the chance you've been waiting for. Yes. It is. Oh, Mr. Drake. Well, hello, Bob. I didn't expect you. Well, I must be in the wrong room. No, you're not, kid. That's the man you want. Ask him. Ask me what, Bob? Uh, my uncle's black and slim. They say you're the man who shot my paw. Are you? Do you have to keep that gun pointed right at me, Bob? Are they telling the truth? Did you kill my paw? Yes, son, I killed him. You, you did? And now you want to kill me. Is that it? I don't know. I, I swore that's what I'd do if I ever found you, but I didn't think it'd be you. Give him some of his own medicine, kid. Well, this is really a surprise. I didn't expect you. It's the last time you'll see me, Drake, so it don't make no difference. Give it on, Bob. No, I, I can't. Mr. Drake has been too good uh, to me. Mr. Drake is the farmer who killed your pa. He's an ex-lawman who took the bounty for that killing and bought the ranch he's living on now. No, I... I can't. I can't do it. If you don't plug him, I will, and I think I'll... Oh! Wait. You grabbed my arm. You made me Never shoot. Never mind. He's done for. Stand That's all that matters. Make folks curious. We'd better get out of here. Oh, yeah. I'm going to the sheriff and tell him that you, you did this. You ain't going to do nothing but come with us out to Drake's ranch. We got a little business out there. After that, you can go to the law if you want to. If you want to hang for murder... But I didn't do it. I telling that story to the law. Come on, kid. Blackie and me have got an option to pick up. Bob, where have you been? Where's Dad? Oh, I didn't know there was anyone with you. Yeah. Ain't you going to introduce this kid? Miss Betty, I... I... What's wrong? Go on, kid. Tell her. Mr. Drake. He's dead. Dead? <laughs> And I killed him. What? Oh, Bob. That's you, right, miss. The kid gunned your old man. Did a real good job, too. <laughs> so all me and my partner want to do is take up our option. What option? Buy the ranch here. For five thousand dollars, and I've got the cash right with me. An option to buy this ranch for five thousand dollars? That's impossible. It's worth ten times that much. Here's the option. 
Is that the old man's handwriting? <laughs> well, yes, but... Well, then sign this bill of sale, and then you and the kid can bear me. What do you mean? Get out. This spread belongs to Blackie and me now. I wouldn't be too sure of that, Slim. Well, neither would I. But, Dad! Mr. Drake! Alive, you can't yes, be... Yes, a... I can. You'd better hand back that option that you've altered from 50000 to 5000 Won't do you any good now, except send you and Blackie back to jail. Why, are you... Oh, oh, my arm... You're not hurt. I just shot oh. your gun away. Put up your hands, both of you. Dad, I don't understand. I'll explain everything later, Betty. I thought I had to sell the ranch, but the bank has given me more time in the mortgage, so I won't have to sell even for 50000 Yeah, but Mr. Drake, I, I shot you. I know, Bob. There were only blanks in your gun. Blanks? But how? I put them there this afternoon, Bob. You still hate me, son. I did kill your father, yes. But he was an outlaw, and I shot him in the line of duty. Oh, no, Mr. Drake. I, I don't hate you. I, I guess I never did. I, I'm sorry. Awful sorry, Mr. Drake. I wonder if you could kind of forget that Mr. Drake and call me Dad. Could you, son? <laughs> Why, sure. I'll be mighty proud to. Dad. Well, my Indian friend is waiting for me. Will you take charge of these outlaws, Mr. Drake, and turn them over to the sheriff? It'll be a pleasure. Adios, my friend. Oh, wait, you can't. Well, I see, Miss Betty. I think I understand now. It was he who made all this possible. Yeah, but how? Because he's the man I've told you about. The Lone Ranger. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, 